Hello there, everyone. Hi, hello, hello, it's me. I am the invisible cactus. Um, right, first, context. Uh, so I joined a very cool YouTuber called Adeptus Artifacts. This is Discord about a couple of weeks ago. And since then, somehow we ended up making a custom chapter of Space Marines. Image, hopefully, on screen now. They're called the Sons of Artifacts. There's, there's a whole thing to it. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to be the one to come up with like the main color scheme for them and then it was beautifully adapted into this wonderful piece of artwork which hopefully we see now and I painted this boy then I painted a further three of them uh, so now I'm close to a full pyre blaster squad but I have yet to paint a fourth one and that is what this guy is uh, he has been primed with uh, Abaddon black, just uh, uh, wash over it. You can also spray them black. I, I'm going to test out spraying with the Terminators next, because I have, I, I have, I am also in the process of painting artifacts as Terminators. Uh, I'll also give you the leaves. Here's the captain. Pretty cool. Uh, yes, but today I'm going to give you a tutorial about how to paint a Sons of Artifexus basic space marine. Um, the chapter master himself, it says he will be doing his own painting video at some point down the line, but I'm just going to show you how I painted mine. Mm -hmm. So first things first, you want to get a dry brush. So I've got a very nice big dry brush here, ladies and gentlemen. Right. So first things first, you want greys. You want lots of greys. I want a very dark grey, first off. Eschen grey, warp fiend grey. So I want this. This is the most vital colour for my scheme. You want Celsius grey. Celestra grey, that's it. That is what gives it a very distinctive colour, and then uh, add null oil on top of that, but we're going to get around to that one later on, ladies and gentlemen. So, first off, we're going to start with our darkest grey, which in this case is Eschen. Now this is just going to provide us with a uh, sort of this is a sort of a prime something to to build off with everything else just getting everywhere so we've got a nice lot of recesses everywhere it, it will not be immediately visible but uh, it's important to just dry brush with this very dark gray first off um, so I'm just gonna leave him to dry for a second so I kind of brush so I'll just quickly show you all the colors I'll be using so first um, I primed it with Abaddon Black, Eshen Grey, and Warp Fiend Grey, Celestra Grey, Corax White later down the line, Macrag Blue, The Fang, Troll Slayer Orange, Retributor Armor, Morn Fang Brown, Lead Belcher, Balthazar Gold, Wraith Bone, Null Oil, and also, I guess, some Mephiston Red. I believe this is all the colors you want. If you want to paint a face on them or any like bases and textures and things that's all up to you this is how i paint a warp fiend gray give that a nice shake up i'm gonna just dry brush that over the whole thing and this is where you can really start to notice you want to focus on the high points the light will be hitting it Really just you want to get some dry brushing everywhere. There you go. Nice and dry brushed. So we're just going to leave him again. Give our dry brush a good old soak in, the, in our pot. And this this is where we start to really notice things. And I must say this is a nice break because I have been painting a lot of tyrannids. I've I've been at a big uh, priming day today. So. Yeah, I've had a, 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 I've got like a big old stack of Gene Steels and other Gribblies just over there waiting to be painted. So yes, next up, Celestra Grey. And this, this is where the color really pops. Make sure see what's going on. So you've not got a big boring time. We might want to give him a second coat if you want to. You can really see he's starting to blend in with his brothers now. 
You really, oh my word, that's a lot. You want to get really as much of this one off the brush as you can. Because the Corax in this case really does just clean. So this one is really just a matter of just getting those proper high points. gone too heavy with that guy. I might need to go over him again with some more, some more of the uh, cells for grey. This is the thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot harder kind of scheme really to get than uh, than your traditional marine. But hey ho, we persist. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut this off and resume. Okay, so the next step is to get some McCrag blue and this is where the proper painting starts because the are now going to do the shoulders or at least the shoulder rings. So you're just going to get like the smallest blob from your paint pot just to put it down your palette. should be using a wet palette for this really but I had to improvise. Send that to your liking. Get it on the end of your brush, and uh, nah, I'll just I'll try and angle this so you can get a good sight, even though it's not the most comfortable painting angle. Normally, these are much closer to my face. Yeah, you just wanna, just wanna go around. It's, it's your normal space room trim. It's just your standard thing. And uh, also with that, you want, you wanna just get covered all over. You also want to just trace around the model's wrist. It's a design element that I thought would look cool. I'll just keep going in that manner until all of the necessary artifacts or bits have been covered. So, you should now be able to see we picked out the top of his helmet, shoulders, wrists, and the tops of the knees. That's all the McCrag blue portions that we want to get. Next up, we're going to tackle the Aquila. And that is a very simple retributor armor. The pull of dirt. Getting into the Imperial symbol. So you want to just paint that up to standard, as well as the skull on the Pyroblaster canister as well as any other details you wish to pick out. Okay, the gold detailing's now done, as you can see. So next up, we're gonna pick out the weapon, which is a very distinctive uh, blue. And in this case, it comes from the fang. The brush is already sufficiently wet, so it's fine on the palette. So you just wanna spread it over as much of the gun as possible. You just want to avoid the uh, actual canister bit uh, and the little flaming unit at the end. They're going to be painted bronze and silver respectively. If you're one of those very smart people who can paint realistic muscle burn, then I implore you to do so because it looks amazing. I can't do that. I'm not even going to attempt it here. It's just Blue, blue gun. Why do they have blue guns? I don't know. 
some trebuchets to have different colour guns. These guys have blue guns. In the official artwork, the gun is a far darker blue, but after experimenting with that, uh, I didn't like the way it looked. It was too hidden. Plus, it gets nicely darkened anyway by the um, by the null now. So while that's drying, we're gonna crack open our Balthazar gold and do the bit of the pie blaster everyone knows. There you go, nice and nice and bronzed there. Just here, but don't forget to get the bit of the front. Vitally important. It's good at all angles. Right. I'm not gonna, not gonna try and ruin anything now, so next up we're gonna do brown. Pick out things like the bolt pistol sheath, the little pouches, and any straps or anything you can see around the figure, like on the sergeant. Start painting it on, and that'll become a sort of leather look. So now you can see the leather pouches have been done. I've also gone to the trouble of painting some parts of the backpack uh, with Abaddon Black, as well as some of the details in the face and the pie blaster ready for lead belcher, as well as the bits of the backpack. Also going to be a very, very faint, but still quite shiny. So. My advice, if you're doing the sergeant's combat knife, to use uh, a much brighter silver. I think it's Rune Fang silver. Yeah, Rune Fang silver. It's Rune Fang steel. Sorry, uh, that's that's what I used. It's a much brighter. Metal colour and looks great. Slight amount of silver on the thing really adds to the marine. Just tiny little details like that. Next thing we're going to pick out is the purity seal and the eyes. But first, we're going to take out our wraith bone. Curdled as always. The purity seal, so you all can see. Some use seraphim CP, but in my case, I'm just gonna wait for the null oil to do its magic. Out the old Mephiston red. Seal. Don't need to be precise because it's going to get covered up anyway. And then this bit's really precise. We're just going to pick out the Marine's eyes, going very, very close in with a tiny drop of the Mephiston Red. So you can see there, I've done his eyes, I've done his purity seal, I've done pretty much everything there is to do in the model if you compare it to the other ones I've done. There's only one last detail to pick out, and that's the orange skull on the shoulder. As well as any more turning up around the model, but that is going to be the, thing, the final thing to add to the thing. For the sergeant, I decided to use a proper transfer just to make him stand out, but for this bloke, for the rest, it's more fitting, I'd say, for their chapter that it's hand painted. This is a very awkward paint, indeed. Trace out a rough square shape and then put a big circle on top of it. Some crack 
looking one that is. It won't be perfect and this paint is very chunky because it's very old. Troll Slayer Orange, but it does the job fine, I think. And I think it adds a tone of these guys just have a bit of trouble painting their own iconography. I experimented with doing it on the knee as well, but that doesn't really look the best, so I've not done it on any of the others. That guy's just special. I think he was just trying to do something different. And then you also want to get a bit of the old fist of red and mix it a little bit in. Paint mixing is definitely not an advice thing in the hobby because uh, it's so imprecise, but that's what I do with these guys. I just mix them together to make a darker orange. There you go, there's Skull of Artifacts. Yeah, there well, it shows up. It doesn't look good, but I kind of like that. It makes every single re feel like he's been done. So. So then you just want to go over the whole thing, inspect, see what you're happy with, see what you're not happy with, fix whatever you want to fix. In this case, I see a little bit of a doodle on his helmet. I'm just going to fix that up. Good and proper. I'm also going to give his gun a little bit of a white dry brush. to pick out some of the details before the wash goes on. Not a strong one, just a very tiny little dry brush. And that's all of the base coating done. Now you could leave it here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use one of my favourite paints all Miniature hobby painting, which is, of course, null oil. Liquid talent, as they say. I'm just going to set your room down, give it a nice big dunk, wipe off a lot of the excess, and then just go to town. That's not enough. Go to town, boy. Cover him from head. To toe in liquid talent. Make sure you get a nice even coverage everywhere. You now, as little or as much pooling as you want, this segment is really completely up to you. And just have a look around, admire what you've done. What you should end up with is something like this. Congratulations! You painted a son of Artifexus. Art knocks and happy painting.